All right, hello everyone. We're back with another episode of LMS Cast. I'm Joshua Millage, and I'm here with Christopher Badgett. And today we're talking about a hot topic in the learning management space, and that is the Tin Can API. And so today we're just going to keep it basic. We're going to let you know what it is and why it's important, and why you should know about it, because there is a revolution that's happening. I think in the uh, online learning space and this is a standard this is becoming a standard it is it is a standard but i think it's going to be the standard in the next few years for uh transferring information so chris i'll let you take it away give us the high level definition of what the tin can api is all right well let's take a look back behind us first and so 95 percent of these podcast episodes have been about learning management systems specifically built on wordpress so that's about delivering courses and organizing your course material and content and so on mm -hmm. in the last episode we talked about an lrs which is a learning record store it's a place where you can collect and gather data that other reporting and tracking tools can tap into so that you can pull information about a student or a program from various different environments and consolidate that in your learning record store. Mm -hmm. the, the Tin Can API, which uh, sometimes known as the Experience API or the X API, uh, is the pipe that connects that learning management system to the learning record store. It's a consistent standard where it can record certain types of statements to pass information to say that Johnny completed this lesson, and that's a recordable event that goes into the learning record store via the Tip Can API. Right, and is this different or similar to what the, is it the SCORM or SCORM, SCORM API? I'm, I'm still, uh, ten can, the Tin Can API, I'm still kind of getting up to speed on the technology, mm -hmm. and, and this question here is more about the history. Yeah. The SCORM came before the Tin Can API, and the Tin Can API is designed to improve upon and build upon it. Um, it, it does, uh, it lifts, the, the SCORM system had some restrictions that the Tin Can API was able to get around. Got it. And, you know, I, I'd like to point out a great informational resource, which is just the uh, tincanapi.com. There's a lot of great information there, and... Um, I can, I can read off some of the, uh, the main bullet points about how that works. Let's do it, yeah. All right, so this is from tincanapi.com. And how does a tin can API work? Well, people learn from interactions with other people, content, and more. These actions can happen anywhere and signal an, an event where learning could occur. All of these can be recorded with the tin can API. When an activity needs to be recorded, the application sends secure statements in the form of noun, verb, object or I did this to a learning record store. So that's what we we're talking about, the mm -hmm. pipe there. And then the LRS records all the statements made and it can share those statements with other learning record stores and, and so on. So what the Tin Can API does is it, it, uh, it gives you like the freedom to have that standard language uh, and it, it allows like different learning record stores to talk to each other. So, you, mm -hmm. so, so it's like a common language. And it also has device freedom where um, it can be pulling data from a mobile phone, simulations, games, uh, even a CPR dummy. And, you know, the list goes on. Wow. That's awesome. So, yeah. So you can think about it like in a more complex uh, online learning situation like CPR, medical stuff where... Right. You may be pulling data from an online course on an LMS, maybe some field exercises even with a CPR dummy and so on. There's so many different places right. that that data could come from. And then maybe that LRS needs to talk to another one that has to do with that student's diploma or certification. Right, right. So it's a way of so, connecting all the dots. And, you know, I think it's really exciting to see, you know, where we're headed with the lifter lms plugin because this is something that i'm i, I know in some point in 2014 we're going to be releasing compatibility with this so that people who build courses on our platform are able to share the data with these these other platforms really these other um lrs's and and uh, all the applications that go along with that so it's the the possibilities are endless it's really exciting to me to see how this can really take um 
someone's information and distribute it in an exponential fashion. Um, and that's just, that's cool. Like it's, it's cool to be a part of this new wave of technology and e-learning, you know, and, and I mentioned it in the last episode, but I'll reiterate it again here, which is, you know, I have looked at APIs from the beginning as, you know, a telephone connection for one application or, um, piece of software or even piece of hardware to talk to another. And it's just a, like you mentioned, it's a standardized way of doing that. So my background is in Infusionsoft and we've used the Infusionsoft API to say talk to QuickBooks. So if a sale is made on Infusionsoft, then it can make a, a record or something in QuickBooks. And so that connection is through the Infusionsoft API. So to apply that here, you know, a grade is posted in someone's LMS and it shows up, like you said, in a maybe a school or a, a certification institution's LRS to say, yes, they completed that course. They've received credit. Here's their grade. Here's their name. And uh, it's a way of organizing things. So it's it sounds kind of dry maybe to some of the listeners, but it's really something to, to wrap your head around and go, okay, when I hear 10 can API, that means that this piece of software, whatever I'm looking at, has the ability to talk to others. I think that's how I would sum it up for people. And um, that's going to be incredibly important as information or as, as education, I think, is you know deb- democratized more and more and uh, we see more and more online learning happen. So I'm excited about it. I think it's cool to see these standards at the foundational level and see them mature and, and, and keep an eye out for um, new players and new standards. And, you know, of course, that's what we're going to be talking about here at LMS Cast is what that looks like and what we're seeing um, being in the trenches. So, yeah, I, I think um, in a nutshell, uh, I'm glad we've defined it. And as we learn more and hopefully there's some tin can experts listening who we can interview. And if you are on uh, an expert in Tin Can API and want to be on the show with us, just go to lmscast.com and uh, find our contact button there. It should be in the footer, and we would love to talk to you about what you know about this and share it with the community. So, Chris, do you have any final thoughts on this crazy API connection? <laughs> sure. I'll just draw a metaphor uh, like about the power of the internet itself. Uh, at first, for me, it was like, oh my gosh, I have access to all this different information. Mm-hmm. And that was great. But over time, I realized that it's really the web or the connections that is really the most amazing to me. So when we right. think about this in the e-learning environment, you can get access to all these courses and everything, and that's great. And you can be the entrepreneur behind that and build these things or share your message and share your vision and that sort of thing. But the connections that are possible with things like the Tin Can API and what we do with data these days is really profound. And you, you can yeah. see it in like places where it's really advanced, where there was a capitalist motive, for example, in advertising. You can get all kinds of data about what articles someone looked at, and then they looked at these shoes on Zappos, and that <laughs> pair of shoes shows up on the blog they read every night. But there's so much opportunity that if we can see what has already happened, uh, with this connectivity in other spaces like advertising or other advanced API systems. Uh, there's just a lot of opportunity for connection and integrated learning. Right. It's extremely powerful. Yeah. Well, I would love to hear the listeners' thoughts on this, and uh, you can leave a comment on this bo- uh, this podcast blog post at lmscast.com. Uh, check it out, and don't forget to sign up for our newsletter over at lmscast.com. Uh, we're going to be releasing a bunch of great content this year. I know we've got some exciting uh, things in the works that I think people will want to know about. Um, so go over to lmscast.com. You'll see a sign-up button on the right-hand side of your screen. And uh, yeah, thank you for listening, and until next time, we'll talk to you then.